Hi everyone and welcome back to our player skills menu series. In the last episode, we have been working on our quick slots functionality. However, we are now going to be moving on to the UI that allows us to assign and swap out the quick slots freely. So let's jump in and take a look at how we set up the user interface for our game. So before we begin with any user interface, we need to set up the various different parts of our elements of our widget interface for this to work. So let's go ahead and create those various elements. We first of all need the parent menu container that allows us to bring up and tell the player what they've got to do to assign a skill. So we're going to have this one as skills menu. And let's actually put this all into a folder to keep it a bit more organized here. And move that there. Okay, so skills menu is the parent one containing this information. We're then going to create the individual skill slots. So we're going to have W skill menu slot. And that's going to be the individual skills that we're going to show on our menu. We're then going to have a quick menu assignment interface to come up when we want to assign a button. So we're going to create another one for this. W skill menu quick slot menu. And then we're going to do another one of those, which would be the quick the skill slots inside of that quick slot menu. Skill menu quick slot slot. Okay, so we've got four elements that are going to be working together. And when I start off making any kind of user interface, I'll start off with blocking it out and making sure that I've got all the pieces I need to before I start coding in any sort of logic or anything else, really. So let's start off with the skill menu. So the skill menu is going to be a container that contains the whole entire menu system. So in here, we're going to have the overlay. And we're going to use that overlay to host a border. And I say it's just blocking out, so we're not looking for anything like pretty wires. We're just going to go to overlay border and give it a padding here of 200. And I'm going to give it a padding on the left here, a further 300, and the right here of 302. Okay. Actually, what I might do is move this along a little bit further to the left here. So let's go to like 500 here, maybe 600. Yeah, something like this because I want space on the left hand side to show the quick slot menu to assign those buttons to it. So we'll come back to this in a second with that in mind. So the border here, I'm just going to change it from white to a dark color, you know, black, like so. Inside the menu, uh, the border here, we're going to have a vertical slot, which is most likely the scenario for most menus you are making. You need some vertical boxing because you probably want to put tabs or button at the top or title, and then the content underneath it. So m most of the time you find yourself using this sort of pattern. So in here, I'm just going to use some text. And we'll put that as a uh, skill menu. And we'll just center align that. So. And then underneath that, it's going to be a wrap box or grid or however you want to present your skills available to the player. So I'm just going to do a wrap box. Obviously, you can do whatever you wish. I'm going to set it to fill. And there we go. Let's give some padding around to our vertical box as well. Let's give that uh, 50. There we go. Okay, next up, we're going to make the individual skill slots that are going to appear in our skill menu. So let's go ahead to the skill menu slot. And this will be a uh, button interface allowing us to click on and select buttons. So we're going to have button like that. And inside the button, we're going to have uh, a image. Like that. And we'll just set a fill. We'll get rid of the padding and get rid of the default padding on the button as well. Um, I personally don't like the padding that comes with the button. I like to customize everything myself. 
Um, so you're even changing the background color to be transparent as well. Okay, so there is our slot. I'm just going to give this a size box around it as well. So that when we put it into our wrap box, it has a default size to it. So width and height, we're going to do 80 by 80. I'll change the design on screen. You can kind of see how it's going to look. Okay, now let's go back to our skill menu. And I'm going to say you just start off by blocking it out. So inside my wrap box here, I'm going to put in the skill menu slot. And there it is. And I want to add several to this to see how it looks. So as I'm duplicating it, I can immediately see one issue I want to fix is the padding between them. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my skill menu slot, click on the top of the hierarchy here, and on the padding on the right-hand side, I'm going to give it a default padding of 10. Now, when you do this, you'll notice that if I go back to my skills menu, it hasn't changed it here. But if I select one, you'll see that the padding option has that reset default value. When you click on it, it resets it. So you can just set all of them at once. And you can handle that all at once as well. Um, okay, so yeah, that's looking a little bit better. So we're going to have loads of skills in here, and I want the player to click on one and give them the option to choose what key on their gamepad to assign it to. Um, yeah, not bad. Okay, so this obviously we're doing gamepad functionality with the quick slot menu. So this needs to be able to support gamepad functionality. So when this thing becomes active, we want to set focus down on our first skill slot here in the skill slot wrap box. So I'm going to go back to my graph. And on the construct, we're going to take the first one, which is skill menu slot, like that. Drag that in, and we're going to do set focus. And we do set keyboard focus, that'd be fine, to our menu slot. Um, you could also do set user focus if you want. That would also work. You just have to give it the player controller uh, specifically, but it doesn't really matter in this case. So, yeah, this set user focus is more useful for like split screen stuff. Um, yeah, it's better than just standard focus stuff. And there's also set focus, which does a similar sort of thing as set keyboard focus, really. It doesn't really do it much different, as far as I'm aware. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I've never had to see the difference between the two. So, yeah. But anyway, that will set the focus onto the slot. Now, with the slot, we need a way to identify when it has focus. Because one of the annoying things about buttons is that buttons don't have a default uh, option to say, Hey, this is what it should look like when it's focused. It has it for it's hovered or pressed, but not for focused, which I think is a bit of a misstep, but we could do it ourselves. So I'm going to go to the graph here, and we're going to add to it an event on added to focus path. This happens whenever this widget or any of its children widgets are added to the focus system. When that's happened, I want to change something visually on it so I can see what's happening. So what I might do here is I'm going to add generic padding around the image here of like five. And on the button, I'm going to make it just change the background color. So from transparent to like blue or something like that. Yeah, so it would just look like it's highlighted. So we're going to make that transparent again. And go to the graph. I'm going to take the button out. Set background color. <clears throat> and we'll get some transparency. 0.7, like that. And then the, uh, the opposite of this is remove from focus path, which does inverse. So whenever it's cleared from the focus path at all, we're going to do set background color back to transparent. Like that. So we've got a very basic setup of how you navigate through the skill menu. Now, by default, UMG has the option to have it so that this will automatically figure out where to go next. So that's handled by the navigation system. So when you go down here, you'll see navigation left, up, right, down, and they're all by default set to escape. So what it means is that if there's focus inside this widget, 
and you say push right, it'll escape it and then go to the right of it to find the next available widget that has the ability to be focused on, which would be this one, and then so on and so forth. The problem you have with this is that when you push up or down, it's going to escape the wrap box in general and leave the map, leave the uh, the widget, which we have to fix, but we'll worry about that in a second. Let's just get the basics working first. So for all this to take focus, we have to make sure it's enabled to be focusable. So again, we're going to put it on the root of our uh, main slot here. Click on the root of this and tick is focusable. And much like the padding, if you go back to the skill menu, you'll see that it doesn't change it automatically. You have to reset its defaults. So once again, we'll select all of them and just do that option for all of them. Okay, so let's put a few more in there so we can see it working for up and downs as well. Okay. So there's our skill menu. So I want to have, first of all, the ability to bring this up and close it, as well as check for navigation. So let's close this. And I'm going to go back to my inputs. And we're going to have the skill. Um, let's change that actually from skill menu, skill quick slots. And make another one called skill menu. Or I'll just do menu skill, just in case there's any weirdness going on there. And we go to the default options and let's add that to our menu skill. And I'm going to make this the uh, the pause button. Okay. So gamepad special right. <clears throat> okay. So let's go add this in. Now you can do this either on the controller or the character, up to you really. Um, I'm going to put this probably on the controller. So if I go over here, I'll do IA menu skill. On the start of this, we're going to create the widget. Choose our quick stop menu or skill menu. <clears throat> and uh, set it to a verbal and add to viewport. And we also want to handle that toggle. So the toggle is that when I push it again, I want it to close this down. So I can either do it here or alternatively, uh, you can do it on the school menu itself, uh, which we'll do so in a second. But let's first of all make this so it doesn't keep adding more of them to this. We're going to check the skill menu option and convert that to validated get. So it only does this if there's no valid skill menu widget. And actually, it might be better to put it on here when we remove it. So we push it again because we've got the skill menu available here. It might be better to use this as it saves us hassling around with it. So we're going to push it again, the skill menu here. We're going to remove from parent and set skill menu to nothing. Okay, so let's play test that. In the game, I hit pause button, and there it is. And we can navigate through our wrap box with the focus path. Now our character is still moving around in the background. And you've got a few options you can handle there. You can pause the game. You can make it disable input. So other stuff's going around. You just can't move the character. Um, totally up to you. But that's generally how that works. So let's just make it so our character stops moving in. Uh, and we pause the game. So let's go back to here. And we're going to go to, when we create the skills menu widget, we're going to do pause, set. Game paused. Turn that on. And when we close it, we're going to turn it off. When you do this, though, you need to make sure that the controller here ticks even when it's paused. So if you go to the class defaults, pause, you want to make sure that tick even when pause is turned on. Otherwise, this input won't work to turn it off. So if I go play, get my controller, hit pause. I can navigate my menu. But now nothing in the world is going to be doing anything. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. So we can navigate around our menu there and select options. So 
speaking of selection, so when I click it, I need it to bring up the uh, focus up the, the skill menu itself on the left hand side here. So let's do that. So this will be very similar to the quick slot skill menu, that look very similar to that. Um, we're going to basically copy the contents of this. So go size box, copy, and then go back to my UI, go to skill menu, quick slot menu, paste that in. Okay, Shade desired, we can see how it looks. Okay, and then I want that to appear on our skill menu. So let's go to our skill menu and place that where we want it to go. So skill menu, quick slot menu. And that's going to go in the overlay here. And we're just going to put that in the center vertical, adding on the left hit by 100 for now. Okay. Now we want this to be easy to see what the player is deciding where they want to go with this. So we're going to make it hidden by default. And then when they select one of these, it's going to make it show. And then they pick which one they're going to pick, uh, choose on here. So we're going to do that and make this by default. Actually, what I might do, that might be better, is if I wrap this uh, skill menu here with a, a uh, border. So wrap with border. And the border, I'm going to set it to fit the whole entire screen with no padding. Now, it may be a bit nuts here, but stay with me. I'm going to change the brush color to black, but change the alpha to 0.5. And then I'm going to go to the skill menu inside the border and then set that to horizontal uh, vertical alignment in the middle and then over to the left. And we've got a similar sort of pattern that we had before. I'm going to put that a bit more over here. So what's going to happen is when we click a button, I'm going to make this whole border appear and disappear to give the player choice of where they want to assign their skill. I think that would look quite nice. So this border here needs to be editable. So we're going to go to border. I'm going to change this one to box quick slot menu and turn on is variable. By default, we want this to be hidden. So we're going to go down to its uh, visibility and change the hidden like that. So when I bring it up, it's still going to look the same. Okay. Ah, I forgot to, to do one thing as well with the inputs. So the input still doesn't work. I forgot that with enhanced input system, you have to on the uh, input over here. Um, sorry, not here on the actual thing over this. Yeah, so we go into the menu skill and tick the trigger when paused. And that will allow us to off and on. Perfect. So there we go, we've got the basic functionality of our widget coming up on the screen and working with our gamepad. Now, that's just the block out of this. We need, obviously need to code in all the functionality of the individual buttons and the skills and the signing. And we'll be covering that in the next episode, which you can watch, by the way, right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all our videos early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.